YouTube was good. It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome to Jody's Corner. This is a movie review. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I am Jody Joe, as you guys already know. So let's go ahead and get to this spoiler free review of an amazing film that I saw called Midway. My goodness, this movie is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and get that off the bat right now. I'm just going to review how fantastic this movie was to me. Now, off top, I am a. I love history. History was my favorite subject growing up in high school. I always found it fascinating learning about the lives, transgressions, hardships, uh, triumphs, victories, um, facts of the past. You know, great people that lived uh, prior to me. I always, always believe that history, is, you know, it's important. That a lot of people don't really care about it. It's boring. It's a dull subject for most people. But for me, I love history. So when Pearl Harbor came out and I think... I think that was like 2001, directed by Michael Bay, starring Josh Hart, Hartnett, uh, Ben Affleck, and uh, the first time I laid eyes on the most beautiful woman I've seen up to that point, Kate Beckinsale. That's where I first fell in love with her. I was enthralled, because I love Pearl Harbor. A lot of people say Pearl Harbor isn't really a good movie, but whether you like that or not, Pearl Harbor is a film that came out that takes place and talks about the events of of Pearl Harbor and everything leading up to it and a little bit of what happened after Pearl Harbor. And I love that movie. And uh, I think that it took a very great shot emotion on the emotional impact of what war was and, and, and why Japan did what it, what it did and the impact of it and the aftermath of that and how it changed human history. Um, a lot of tales, a lot of uh, documentaries and a lot of other, uh, uh, Movies have been made uh, around the Pearl Harbor era, but where this movie shines is that no other film has, that I have seen, has, and I'm not going to say accurately because I don't, I wasn't there, and I, I, I don't read all the books on this shit, so I was kind of, I really didn't understand what Midway was, the title of this film. So what Midway is, is it is a battle in a location of the, of the Pacific of where after the, J the J Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and trapped all those air, uh, 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 soldiers under the Arizona, sunk all those ships, destroyed all those homes and stuff and, and planes and stuff, um, Japan was still occupying the Pacific coast and they weren't finished. They could, their plan was to completely destroy our naval, uh, uh, forces and even penetrate the west coast of california and probably even further before the united states would be even be able to stop them this is a story of that mission it's a story of that battle and we follow these individual heroes and see these different and we see the hierarchy of what it took in order for us to decode figure out try to guess Japan's next plan of attack after the events of Pearl Harbor because Pearl Harbor wasn't the end of it that could have been a lot worse in real human history Pearl Harbor was just the beginning and if the Battle of Midway didn't happen who knows where this country would be at you know so this is a, a very important piece of human history that I will sleep on and you know I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to experience a film like this man because this movie is it, it. It feels real. You feel a connection to the to the movement. Not necessarily an individual character, but there is this one individual character who plays. Um, you probably recognize him as the first few seasons of Game of Thrones. Dario Naharis. He was Khaleesi's boyfriend. He was the cell sword, the assassin of the Second Sons. Um, he was a character in this film called uh, what was his name? Uh. Dick Best, I believe his name was Dick Best. He's a real person, and all the, all this stuff seems it's, it's it's all these characters that you see in this film are real people who had lived during that time and did these feats. So we 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 see this pilot here, we see this wingman, we see this gunman, and they have their own little stories, and we follow them through these battles, and we start to I felt like I started to connect with them, I started to root for them. Now they weren't completely fleshed out characters because this is wartime, and they don't. This film does not waste its time. This film gets right into the shit in the first 10 minutes of me watching this movie. And I really appreciated that. 
when I first noticed it and it started to take off like boom, boom, I'm like, wow, we're not gonna we're not gonna get that Pearl Harbor effect from Michael Bay, how we we fought, we see this love story between Ben and Affleck, see them as children, how Ben can't read and and, and nah, there's really there's really none of that. There's not that really underlying storytelling element. Like Michael Bay wanted you to feel for Josh Hartnett and Ben Affleck and the love triangle that they had about them being brothers and growing up. This director, this film, this script is really sticking itself to the actual battles, the, the 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 war itself. That's like the shining highlight of this movie, and I really appreciate it. I was really skeptical at first. I'm like, wow, they're already getting into it without even establishing characters that we're going to follow and care about. But they really followed through and, and showed me something. Like, bro, like you could just go right into the action without even establishing the hero you know the guy that always gonna survive at the end you know the hero you know the villain who's always in the way and you gotta overthrow and prove him wrong it, it, it wasn't as that wasn't in here it, it wasn't shown and i'm like this is this is unorthodox this is not how uh films are normally a layout and that's a good thing man this film really captures the essence of what war is and it in in for for the first time in a long time i was impacted emotionally and i was impacted uh uh uh, physically with like literal chills down my spine when certain scenes went down not because i cared so much about the character which i did it's because they built this film they built these scenes they built all this with this incredible amount of tension there's so much buildup in the way they they talk about certain battles that are coming up the way they talk about and the and when i see the visual obstacles i see the obstacles they have to go through in order to get things done and when they get there they like I, the viewer, feel so good and tense watching it. And there's one scene in this film where it gave me some chills and goosebumps that has to, that I won't give it away, this is a spoiler, but you guys will know. It has to do with a plane and a ship. Just the, uh, one plane, one ship. And that's where I'll leave it. And, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you watch this film. It gave me literal chills and I felt like, I felt so proud, man. And it wasn't like, yeah, proud of your country, of course, but it was a, it was a proud, it was a pride of uh, uh, humanity. You know, it was, I felt good that, and that good triumphed over, over evil. That's how it made me feel. I'm not saying that the Japanese were evil. It's war. People have their reasons. And, and that's another thing. That's another thing of how I, I love how they did this movie because in Pearl Harbor, the, the Japanese were, were evil, bad people. That's how they, they were, they were, uh, uh, portrayed in this film you have exact reasons and you really know and you kind of sympathize with them and you know why they're at war you know why they're they're pushed up against the wall and you understand why they chose to do what they did even though it was wrong you know why people do what they do in here and this movie explores it all this goes back into japan and shows why things are crumbling how things are starting to crumble how the tension how far back the tension goes it goes and shows you uh, scenes of the aftermath and the aftermath of Pearl Harbor. I really, I really would like to sell you on this note. Think of this as the sequel to the 2001 film Pearl Harbor. If you go watch that film, you're gonna, you might feel how I felt watching Pearl Harbor. Here's why. I, here's the number one problem I have with Pearl Harbor. It built these characters and it felt good. Everything was awesome. But the retaliation of America back to Japan was mediocre and it was short-lived. And I don't think Michael Bay did a good job at showing us how we retaliated and won ourselves to victory and, and, and redeemed ourselves. We got our redemption. It was just one little bombing over a city and then it, was, then it meant nothing. It was so tight on the emotional, not more the war. And that's where it, it, it had issues. This film and why I keep tying Pearl Harbor to this movie, I have to because the events of the Pearl Harbor film are retold in this film indirectly because it's a true story. And it's if you love Pearl Harbor, if you're a fan of Pearl Harbor, I am. You have to see Midway. You have to see this movie. If you're not a fan of Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor, the film. You have to see this movie because this is a good movie. This is like better than it when it comes to the actual war, not the love triangle, even though I thought that was amazing. The elements of the war usurp Pearl Harbor. You know what I'm saying? So you naturally should go see this movie, whether whatever whatever side of the fence you're on with that film, Pearl Harbor. Midway has great characters. It has it's smart. 
It's bold. It's brave. It makes you feel good. It's riveting. The action is good. The CG is pretty bad. It's pretty jarring CG. Now, I got to be technical with this movie and be honest. Some of the green screen is pretty atrocious. You could really tell that there's a lot of studio fake lighting on these characters. Almost every, oh, this movie is probably 80% fake. Like, it's just these these these. You see the, the backdrop of this terrible background, but you see the real car and the real man walking into this CG building. Uh, CG backdrops for sure. I remember that there's the planes were, were, were real and, and, and a couple of the ships. There's the, the beginning of the movie is an open shot. You get a first shot of a ship in the water and soldiers doing workouts on the top of this uh, battleship. And it's just a, that entire shot was fake. It just wasn't real, and and I think the CGI could have been a lot better. This movie could have used another $30, $40 million in its budget, I believe, but still, even that's like the number one issue is the CG. You know, that that's a pretty big issue because it really delves into how real we feel watching the movie, but uh, uh, exceptions can naturally be made. But this film shines on all other fronts. This is definitely a film that you should definitely go see because I really enjoyed this movie and it shines and it will make you feel proud of your country, proud of being a human and it makes you feel sorry for Japan, it makes you feel sorry for the victims lost. It makes you just feel sad at the same time as well to experience it. So I love this movie and you guys should definitely go see it. With all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this movie an ace. <laughs> an ace of spades. The Ace of Spades. It's an A for me. I'm so happy to be able to give another movie an A this year because this movie uh, really surprised me. And this year of Hollywood has been really bland. You know, I'm surprised at how bland this year has been. You know, so uh, I definitely give this an A. Subscribe down below. Hit that like button. You know, if you keep like the real movie reviews, I appreciate you all for watching. Thank you very much. I'm Jody Joe, and I'm out this day, man. Deuces.